Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Got a crazy story out of Nocketty, Florida, and this one does not involve a Florida man. It involves a bank. But it's not Florida Bank because it's a national banking institution. But it's a crazy story. $35,000 is huge for us. Couple left begging for their own money years after accidental deposit into wrong account. Uh, Edward, Dwayne, and Hamza all sent this to me. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, Bank of America has refused for three years to return the couple's $35,000. So now they're forced to sue. Okay. Now, this is from First Coast News. It's a law designed to keep child actors' parents from ripping them off. That's at the heart of this. So many of you might know this, but there was an actor named Jackie Coogan years and years and years ago. When he was a child, he made tons and tons of money. Uh, And his parents took the money, of course, because, hey, you can't let the kid handle the money. And then when the kid grew up, he discovered his parents had just squandered his money. So California passed a law requiring guardians or parents of child actors to set aside a certain amount of their wages into a sealed trust account known as a Coogan account, named after, of course, Jackie Coogan. So in this case, the kid earned $80, 80, $80, $80. He was six years old, and it turns out that he basically did one commercial, and that was it, 80 bucks. So the mom explains that... uh, After this one job was done, we called it quits. (laughs) Soon after, the couple moved from California to Nocketty and largely forgot about the trust account until June of 2018. So there's this one account they've got. It's got 80 bucks in it. They don't think about it because it's 80 bucks, number one. Number two, it's their kids. So somewhere down the road when the kid grows up, he gets this 80 bucks plus whatever interest has accrued in the meantime. Uh, So um, that month, June of 2018, the couple got a big refund for a purchase they made that didn't work out. So the husband purchased a used Lexus from a dealership in Cleveland, Ohio. And it turned out that the car was bad. Some might even say a lemon, although it was a used car. But we won't get into that. The wife says the whole undercarriage was rusted. The car was a hot mess, basically. Incredibly, the used car dealer let them return the car and they got their money back. Oh, or so they thought. Now here's the deal. <laughs> Some of you have already caught this. The miracle in this story is the fact that they got somebody to buy back a used car at a dealership. (laughs) But we'll move on. We'll move on. While using the Bank of America app to deposit the refund check into their joint savings account, the wife tapped the option that said regular savings and finished the transaction. And then about five minutes later, when she's looking at the balances, she said, wait a second, the balance is low on the wrong account. Then she realized that she'd accidentally clicked the button to deposit the check into the son's Coogan account. Now, you might say, but that's her fault. Well, there's a couple things going on here. She called the bank immediately and every single day thereafter trying to correct the mistake. She said that bank officials told her, don't worry about it. They assured me that a check written to the husband for a returned car would not clear because... That name is not on the Coogan account. So the fact that she was trying to deposit the check into an account that it should have gone into because the names matched, they said, don't worry, it will not clear in this account because the names don't match. Well, guess what? Then the 14th day hit and the check cleared, and now it was in the trust. That was three years ago, three years ago. Despite hours of effort, negotiation, and even a civil lawsuit, the couple has been unable to get their money back. Uh, I think that um, the couple have been jerked around, says their attorney. He says the bank's explanation of why it can't return the money has changed over the years. First, they said the money couldn't be moved out of the trust without a court order. But when the couple investigated how much it would cost to get a court order, they were told it would cost about $7,000. Bank officials then agreed to return the money without a court order. But in a transaction, the bank classified as a payment rather than a transfer, so that the couple would have to pay taxes on it as income. And that makes no sense either, because this would not be income, obviously. So, to make things worse, the money in the account has recently vanished. It's not there. Uh, The account has reflected, at times, a zero balance, and at times, a hold of $35,000, and never any real answers about where the money is, according to the attorney. 
In fact, the account currently shows, ready for this, a negative $35,000 balance. That's a little terrifying, says the wife, to see your money just gone. Now it's a zero balance with a negative $35,000, and it's been that way for months. The husband says not having access to their money has been a constant source of financial stress. Both work. They've got two small kids. Uh, Because they needed a car to replace the uh, Lexus, they had to dip into their emergency fund because they couldn't use the $35,000 back from that car. They've also had to defer their student loans and cash in their 401ks. Uh, The husband said it takes a long time to save up that money, and it was just taken from us. We had no access to it, no emergency fund, so it's just this weight on our shoulders. Uh, When you've got one of the largest banks in the country taking advantage of middle-class folks, says the attorney, $35,000 to them is a big deal and affects their day-to-day life. For Bank of America, of course, it's pennies. He says, I can't read the mind of a jury, but I would expect them to be shocked and appalled that it's gone this far. The case is, in fact, headed for a jury trial if it does not settle. In addition to their $35,000, the couple are seeking lost income and punitive damages. At this point, it's not so much a question as to how the couple can be made whole, which is a question for the jury, but the ultimate question would be, what can dissuade Bank of America from behaving in this fashion going forward? What will dissuade Bank of America from ignoring families like this and holding their money and making it disappear for years at a time? Now, First Coast News, who published this story, reached out to the bank several times via email and spoke to a corporate rep who all declined to comment. Bank lawyers have filed several motions seeking to dismiss the suit on technical grounds, but so far they have not challenged the actual basic facts of the case. Again, basic facts. The man had a check made out to him. His wife went to deposit using it the, using the app into their joint account. Accidentally clicked the account of their son, but the father's name is not on that account. It should not have been able to be deposited into that account. And in fact, the bank, she says, told her, don't worry about it. It'll get kicked back and you can redeposit it later. So two months ago, the bank filed a motion essentially conceding the couple's point and seeking a court order to release the funds. They now say they'll release the funds if only they had a court order. Uh, They wrote, as it does appear that plaintiffs mistakenly deposited the check into the Coogan Trust account and that the proceeds were not intended for the minor child, Bank of America submits that good cause has been shown and requests that this court enter an order permitting Bank of America to release $35,107.50 to the plaintiffs, which sounds good, right? Except that the attorney points out that this is their last ditch effort to scuttle the case, because remember... That was what they offered to settle for three years ago. Time goes by. The attorney says that's their attempt to try to nullify the entire lawsuit by having the funds released and then everyone goes their merry way in Bank of America's eyes. I don't think that reconciles or really resolves the frustration over the last three years. The couple say they would have welcomed that offer three years ago. Even a year ago, the attorney offered to settle the matter in exchange for the return of the money plus two hours of legal fees. And you have no idea how generous that is (laughs) because the man spent more than two hours talking to the clients and doing the research and then contacting somebody at the bank. And, you know, so two hours is not much to ask for. So the husband now says it's just too late. It's a little too late now. We're angry. Uh, We're three years into this. We attempted that in the beginning, multiple attempts in the beginning to resolve it. And it obviously fell on deaf ears. Even if they get their money back, the couple say, the experience will have permanently cost them their faith in the system. Uh, after being customers with them for 20 years, the husband says, we're now begging for our money back. $35,000 accidentally deposited into this oddball account. And I say that because there probably aren't that many people in Florida or Ohio with Coogan accounts uh, with respect to how many other accounts they have at the bank, right? So, you know, I've mentioned before, I'm an attorney, so I've got an interest-only lawyer's trust account, an IOLTA account. When I handle client money, it doesn't go into my personal account. It goes into my client account, okay? And so that's a different kind of account. So banks have got all these different kinds of accounts they have. And so obviously, when something weird like this happens, you think somebody could look at that and go, hmm, that's strange. Um, and I guess the real concern here is, what if $35,000 did belong to the kid and was deposited into the account. And the parents go, hey, that's our money. We want that money out. The bank would have to look at that. But all you got to do is look at the check that was deposited, and it came from a car dealership and was written to the father. 
why would that check be appropriate to get deposited into the child's Coogan account? And it would seem that that's so obviously a mistake. The fact that it took three years to get this far is, is astounding until you realize that it's actually just three years because the parents didn't really know what else to do. And I suspect, like many people, they were hesitant to file a lawsuit. And I've met, I, and many people don't believe this, but it's true. One of the most common things I hear from people who call my office, they go, Steve, I've got a defective car. I've got some legal issue, whatever it might be. I've got some legal problem. And I go, I can help you. The second thing they tell me is, I've never filed a lawsuit before. I don't like the idea of filing a lawsuit. I never wanted to be somebody who filed a lawsuit. And I, I tell people, I said, but you understand, most people don't call my office and go, whoo, I want to file a lawsuit. It sounds like fun. Most people actually are put off by it. And so a lot of people hesitate before calling an attorney or hesitate before pulling the trigger on a lawsuit. And so the three years these people took to get to here, I suspect it's partly because they were assuming there has to be some other way. You know, there's got to be. There's such a simple explanation as to how that money got in the wrong account. It should be very easy to get it back out. And if nothing else, we should be able to rely upon the statements made by the people when we called and said, hey, we made a mistake five minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, whatever it was. And it's don't worry about it. Well, three years later, that, huh? We're still worried. <laughs> It turns out that phone call was meaningless, but we relied upon something told to us by Bank of America. So it's a crazy story, and I'm not sure what's likely going to happen here with respect to what else they're entitled to beyond the $35,000. Um, attorney fees and court costs seem like a no-brainer, and the question is, should something else happen with respect to punitive damages and so on? And it depends on the state. Some states allow them, some states do not. And some states, where they do allow them, they have very, very specific definitions and so on, rules and how, get, and how they get applied. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But, you know, interestingly enough, when they ask for their money back, immediately they're told you can't have it. Now, three years later, the bank goes, oh, it's obviously a mistake. You want your money back? Just got to agree to accept it without asking for anything else. Don't even want to pay the attorney fees for two hours of work. <laughs> Crazy story, crazy story. From First Coast News in, uh, I guess it's pronounced Nocatee, Florida. Edward, Dwayne, and Hamza Senate. Thanks a lot. We'll see what happens. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Solitude is like punctuation. A paragraph without periods and commas would be exhausting to read.